Recall that electromagnetism is essentially the study of the relationship between electricity and magnetism. Now, a Scottish physicist by the name of James Clerk Maxwell was able to unify the field of electromagnetism into a set of four differential equations which are now known as Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. And these four equations are shown on the board. So equations 1, 2, and 3 we actually spoke about in previous lectures and we derived these equations. So as we'll see in just a moment, equation 1 is Gauss's law for electricity, equation 2 is Gauss's law for magnetism, and equation 3 is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Now equation 4 which we're going to discuss and derive in the next lecture is known as the general form of Ampere's law. So let's go through each one of these equations and, and let's summarize the implication of each one of these equations. So let's begin with equation 1. So equation 1 tells us that the closed integral of the dot product of the electric field vector and our infinitely small area vector dA is equal to the total charge enclosed in our chosen surface divided by the constant known as permeativity of free space. So, this equation once again is known as Gauss's law for electricity and it tells us that anytime we have an electric charge, that electric charge will produce an electric field. So it connects the concept of charge and electric field. Now let's move on to equation 2. So equation 2 is known as Gaussian's law for magnetism. It tells us that magnetic field lines, unlike electric field lines, have no beginning and no end. That is, magnetic field lines form continuous loops and that means that if we take the closed integral of the dot product of our magnetic field B and our infinitely small vector dA, that will equal zero because the net magnetic flux through our chosen Gaussian surface will be zero. Now let's move on to equation three. Equation three is known as Faraday law of electromagnetic induction and it tells us that a changing magnetic flux as a result of a changing magnetic field will induce an electric field as described by the following equation. So if we take the closed integral of the dot product of the electric field vector and our infinitely small displacement vector dl that is equal to to the negative of the derivative of our magnetic flux with respect to time. And finally, let's examine equation 4. Once again, equation 4 will be discussed and derived in more detail in the following lecture. Now, this equation is known as the general form of Ampere's law. It essentially tells us that a magnetic field is produced by an electric current as shown by this term and is also produced by a changing electric field which is given by the second term. So our closed integral of the magnetic field vector B in our infinitely small displacement dL is equal to term 1 mu naught multiplied by the electric current enclosed plus the second term mu naught multiplied by epsilon naught multiplied by the derivative of our electric flux with respect to time. Once again, this is known as the general form of Ampere's law. 